So as we're going, I'm basically activating my glute and I'm driving this out into my hand. What's up guys, Ben Brewster here from Trend Athletics. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to do the reverse throw properly. But first, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. So the reverse throw is a great exercise for training the backside of the shoulder. Um, this is a good complement to add into either your post throwing recovery or your pre-throwing um, arm warm up routine. Again, this isn't a backwards chaining drill per se, so we're not directly working on our mechanics. Um, in this drill. There could be some mechanical, mechanical carryover, um, but again, we're not directly working on transferring this exact pattern to our throwing. So the timing and the order of exactly where you place this isn't as important in my opinion. Um, it's more just specifically getting this done over the course of the week um, because this is, again, a great exercise just for warming up the backside of your shoulder um, and teaching it to be able to produce force in kind of the reverse pattern of what we typically um, use in regular throwing throughout the course of the week. The first cue is effectively bracing the front leg. So most guys, as they go through this drill, they rotate everything together and let that front knee cave in. What we wanna do is effectively segment the energy in the opposite way of a regular throw. So brace the lower half, keep that front leg on target, and we're rotating the thoracic spine around a braced lower half. So it should look like this. Okay, so very stable lower half. Um, basically, a good cue for focusing on that is trying to drive that front foot into the ground and trying to drive that knee out. So as we're going, I'm basically activating my glute and I'm driving this out into my hand rather than letting it start to cave in. Okay, the second important cue is trying to brace the front arm. So as I get from here, rather than letting the upper half just all rotate as one, um, again, think about trying to uh, start a lawnmower. That's kind of a good cue is where you get to here, now we're pulling against the glove side. So we get a little bit of internal rotation on the glove arm, and it's that exact opposite pattern of throwing where we have something to effectively pull against. So I get here and I'm gonna try to think about rowing a lawnmower and pulling against the front side. Okay, so that's the second cue. Side note about the glove arm um, is it can be really helpful for guys to hold something in that glove arm, just to have something to squeeze on and something to remind them to actually brace that front side and pull against that front side without anything in the front front arm. A lot of times guys just forget about it and everything just kind of goes together like that. And we're not effectively producing force out of that brace position. The third cue is gonna be reaching with the scap and starting an effective um, upper half follow through position. So when we finish the throw, our scap is gonna protract, our shoulder is gonna internally rotate and our forearm is gonna pronate. So we wanna start in that same exact position to be able to train the arm in that end range position. So rather than just starting upright, arm bent on the opposite hip, we're gonna reach out far, internally rotate, pronate, and that's our starting position right here. From here, we're trying to reverse the pattern. So from here it goes scap first, see how my scap retracts, from there, then the elbow goes, from there, then the hand goes. So it's a sequential order through the throw, not just one unit spinning at the same time. So again, it looks like this. Reach, scap, elbow, hand, in that sequential order. As far as general ball weight recommendations, I typically don't like to see high school, college pro guys go over a two pound ball. Um, if that works for you, that's great, um, but I typically start to see com compensatory patterns um, when guys go too heavy on this drill, so you stop being able to see the movement happen where we want it. Um, again, this isn't a drill where you have to go super heavy, so two pound ball works really well um, for more mature pitchers, and one pound ball is what I like for guys 13, uh, 13 years old and younger. Um, again, just this isn't one to go super heavy on. It's, it's a sequencing drill. Um, it's definitely something we're trying to load, but if you get too heavy, you start to get into compensatory patterns. Um, so a few sets of 10 reps typically is all you need a few times a week or pre-throwing. Um, again, because this isn't a backwards chaining drill and we're not specifically working on our mechanics um, in this drill, it doesn't necessarily have to be done pre-throwing. If you don't tend to like it pre-throwing, you can add it in as part of your post-throwing recovery. Um, you can mix it in during your weekly lifts as part of your arm care um, through your lifts. There's a number of different ways to get it in. Um, but again, it's just a really good drill to train the backside of your shoulder. Um, just make sure you're getting it done over the course of the week.